Hi, it's Renee with Harvest Hill Cottage. I got a new microphone, so let me know if the sound is a little bit better in this video than in the past. I got to tell you something. My husband does not bring me flowers, but he does bring me old, rusty, crusty, vintage junk. And I couldn't be happier about that. Today, I'm going to share with you a treasure that my husband brought home to me recently. We're also going to flip some other thrifted finds and we're going to apply a faux rust effect that I think is really, really cool. And at the end, I have a little announcement to make about a new product. So let's get flipping. Don't get me wrong, I love flowers. I mean, I really, really love flowers and I love getting flowers, but given the choice, I will take the junk any day. My sweet husband, John, has known that I have been wanting an old iron gate for my decor. And so he found one and brought it home to me as a surprise. Only problem is, it's purple. But we all know that's not really a problem because we can just paint it and fix it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to apply a rustic rust finish to this gate. And we're going to do the same thing to some other thrifted finds like this candlestick, this old silver plated tray and also this cute little heart-shaped tin that I found at a thrift shop. Now we all know the first step in any thrift flip is to clean. So we got busy cleaning. Uh, the gate needed some extra TLC, so we used a wire brush to really get in there and clean it up. We used this chocolate uh, color paint from Fusion Mineral Paint, added some fresco powder, which is just a texturizing powder, and then we just dabbed on a really thick coat onto the gate to give it a nice um, sort of bronzy base coat. And just dab it on really thick because um, that really helps your piece to look aged. Whenever I work on projects, I try to do more than one. I like to multitask. So um, I typically will work on one item and then while it's drying, I'll move on to the next. So here I am just dabbing on um, a, a charcoal color onto the candlestick since it was already black with the fresco powder. And then I moved on to the tray and I went back to the chocolate color and you can see the center of the tray i painted um, a creamy white color and that's because we're going to apply uh, something fun a little bit later on now it's time to apply the rust effect choose a copper or a burnt orange color for this step i chose fusion's metallic copper uh, it's a little bit more of a you know, shiny metallic, which was fine for me. If you want a matte finish, then go ahead and choose something that's a little bit more matte. I added some of the Fresco texturizing powder uh, just to thicken it up. And then I just dabbed it on, uh, sort of dabbed and swirled. And then I did some dry brushing just to give a nice thorough coverage with the rust look. And then I just did the exact same thing on all the other pieces. The gate got the same treatment with the just dabbing and dry brushing over top of that chocolate base coat. And I absolutely love the look. 
I decided to use an antiquing glaze just to knock back a little bit of the shine from the metallic copper. A glaze is really nice for adding an extra coat to any of your pieces. It'll add some antiquing age to the piece and a little bit more interest. If you've never used a glaze, it's as simple as brushing on and then wiping back to the level that you are satisfied with the look. And since I was going for a rustic finish here, rather than wiping too much of the glaze back, I just sort of dabbed off some of the excess. And you can always dampen your cloth if you want to knock it back even more. For something a little different on the tray, I decided to use a little bit of a green glaze. So I just used Fusion's clear glaze and then you just add whatever paint color you want for uh, whatever color glaze you want. So I added um, a little bit of green to the clear glaze and just added a green patina to the outside of the tray. And I did the same thing on that little tin heart. Okay, this is the beautiful decoupage paper from Jamie Ray Vintage called Monarch Chromatic. And I used a part of this paper for the tray project. If you've never used Jamie Ray decoupage paper, it's fantastic. It's thick and durable, but yet thin enough to work with nicely on a decoupage project. I recently made a video tutorial on the decoupage process, and I'll link that video in the description box below. And here everything is all finished and ready to go. I'd love to know which one of these is your favorite. Let me know in the description box below what you think. And do you think that you might try this on some of your pieces? Okay, as promised, here is our announcement. Jamie Ray Vintage has added eight new gorgeous vintage papers to their decoupage line. They are coming out the 1st of August. They are on our website for pre-order right now, and they will be available as soon as they are released, end of July, early August. Aren't they gorgeous? 
I can't wait to use them on all my projects. Look at those vintage mermaids. I love it. Thanks so much for being here with us. And please do subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any future projects. Thanks. Is this thing working?